we are going to die and that makes us the lucky ones most people are never going to die because they're never going to be born the potential people who could have been here in my place but who will in fact never see the light of day outnumber the sand grains of Sahara that are here we privileged few who won the lottery of birth against all odds how dare we whine at our inevitable return to that prior state from which the vast majority have never stirred. In the cycle of life, not only here on Earth, but in the cosmos, as stars die, particularly those that die in spectacular deaths, the high mass stars that manufactured heavy elements in the core, those give the seeds of the next generations of stars that then increase the likelihood that that next generation will have planets and planets that contain the ingredients of life itself. Being an astronomer does have an effect on how we see human beings and that's that it allows us to see ourselves as part of an ongoing process. Most educated people are aware that we are the outcome of four billion years of evolution. Um, but they tend to feel that we are the culmination, that's it. Whereas as an astronomer I know that the uh, sun is less than halfway through its life and the universe may have an infinite future. And so uh, in that perspective we may be not even the halfway stage in evolution and so post-human evolution, either organic or maybe in silicon-based computers, could go far beyond that. And so, uh, and this may already have happened in other parts of the, the cosmos, there may be uh, entities far beyond human beings in ways we can't possibly conceive. And so altogether, I can't believe the special stories that have been made up about our relationship to the universe at large because they seem to be too local, too provincial. The earth, he came to the earth. One of the aspects of God came to the earth, mind you. And look at what's out there. How can he, it isn't in proportion. Then you begin to wonder, once you start doubting, which I think to me is a very fundamental part of my soul is to doubt. And they ask. People have a tremendous investment in survival in continuity, in going on and on through time. Now it seems gloomy and uh, wretched to point out that we're all going to die. If you want to derive ethics and morals from reality, from human solidarity, from actual knowledge of where we stand in relation to the universe, it may not be too depressing to realize that we are in fact alone in this. We can't pray supernatural aid, we can't invoke what we don't know, we're, we're arrogant and vain when we do do it. It tempts us into saying that we're better than people of other faiths or other religions. And that if we understood we were all stranded on a rather difficult shore, uh, born into a losing struggle, with every day of our lives being more and more subtracted from less and less, the stoicism of that conclusion might make us turn towards each other in a more interested and definite way and would demonstrate more integrity and would free us from the great retardant of human civilization, the realm of illusion. I want to live my life taking the risk all the time that I don't know anything like enough yet, that I haven't understood enough, that I can't know enough, that I'm always hungrily operating on the, on the margins of, of a potentially great harvest of future knowledge and wisdom. I wouldn't have it any other way.